Write this down. Divorce is not the unpardonable sin. The reason why I put that there because sometimes people go through a bad experience and they do experience divorce and then they feel like their life ain't going to work anymore. God doesn't want to use them anymore. His purpose ain't going to be fulfilled anymore. That is not true. God forgives all sins including unfaithfulness or the breaking of a covenant in marriage. This is not an unpardonable sin. Many great people have gone on to change the world after a divorce. Catherine Kuhlman was a divorcee. She changed the world. What a powerful woman. So sometimes we run on hard times and things don't work out. Pick yourself up and don't, get, don't just get custody of the kids. That's what people do most of the time. They miss the point. First, you get custody of yourself. Get yourself back. And so don't be afraid to not be married. It's not the solution to any problems. Sometimes it's the formation of great problems. God says something about divorce. Interesting. And I, I wanted to put it up here because I think this has to do with, I want to frighten you away from marriage. Just for a reason, right? First of all, the ultimate trauma in life is divorce. Malachi 2, 16 says what? Read it out loud together. I hate divorce, says the Lord, God of Israel. And I hate a man's covering himself with violence as well as with his garment, says the Lord Almighty. Notice he ties divorce with violence. Why? Because divorce is a violent act. When you bond with another person, bonding is a dangerous word, bonding is like shooting webs at each other, like a spider web. Every time you speak to someone, you shoot a web. Every time they listen to you, they get a web. And the more you talk to someone, the more webs are created. And then, the deeper the conversation gets, the thicker the webs become. If I say to you, good morning, and you say good morning back, there's a web. There's a bond between us. But it's a very shallow bond. If I, if I say to you, good morning, uh, how are you doing, and how's your family, that's a little deeper bond. I'm entering your life now. And if I ask you, okay, how is your children, how is your oldest child? Now I'm getting into a deeper bond. And then I get, if I get into questions like, what do you want to do with your life the next 20 years? That's a deeper bond. I'm prying into your destiny now. Uh, what, what are the things that really hurt you the most in your life? That's a deeper bond. See, and you've got to be careful who you bond with and what questions you ask. Because there's certain relationships you've got to keep them at the thin level. You don't want to get too deep. Like if you're married, you've got to be careful what you ask other people of the opposite sex. Because you don't want certain bonds to be con connected or created. If you're not serious about a relationship, don't get into deep questions. Because people start bonding with you. Sometimes you hear people say, well, you know, I just took him out for lunch. I took him out for dinner, and we were chatting, and all of a sudden he thinks I like him. Well, it depends on what you all talked about. This is serious. You understand this? You start talking to the person about, well, what, are you, what are your dreams for the next five years? Right away you're telling me you want to get at a deeper level in my life. That's a serious bond you want to connect. I mean, you know, you are nosy now. You, you push it. You, you're getting down into some thick webs. And once those webs get thick, and, I, and that's why marriage is so dangerous, because marriage is not just bonding mentally and socially and psychologically and, 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 you know, and emotionally, but you get now into physical bonding, which is sex. And that's a deep bond, because now I gave you myself. And divorce is trying to break that bond, all those bonds. And, and you can never break a bond 
if you are bonded at that level, and sometimes it's even not even married, you might be going along with someone for five years. You all been, you know, close to each other, and you've been courting or whatever you call it for five years. There's some t thick bonds in there. You, you, you isolated yourself from other people to bond with this person. So them bonds are deep, and you decide you can break it off. It ain't that simple. It's almost like a marriage. And you cannot break a bond. You can't even cut it. You have to tear it. And that is called a broken heart. A broken heart is bleeding bonds. They are open wounds. They, are, they, were, they were ripped from your emotions, from your psyche, from your spirit. And that's why relationships are very dangerous. You don't want to, to develop at, at levels that you can't be responsible for. And that's why God says, I hate divorce. Divorce is traumatizing. It's the ripping of two people's bonds apart. No lawyer can give you a divorce. Impossible. No judge can give you a divorce. Impossible. What they give you is a piece of paper. They cannot give you an emotional divorce. That's why when you leave the classroom, all hell breaks. I mean, when, when, you, leave, when, when you leave the courtroom, rather, all hell breaks loose after that for months. Because it ain't as simple as you thought. And if kids are involved, the bonds are twice as thick. So, he's saying before you even get into marriage, think about this. Can I handle the ripping? Can I handle wounds that last for ten years? I'm still licking them. And then every time I see this person in the food store, some blood comes out again. And I see them in the school picking up the kids, the blood. You know, there's this, do you want that trauma? Or would you rather just be happy until you find the right person that you ain't never going to get divorced from? That's what he's talking about. That's the violence part of it. It's, it's violent to get a divorce. And some of you divorces in the room know what I'm talking about. It is violent. It, it, it upsets your life for years. And so the question is, why does God hate it? He hates it because there's no cure for the broken heart. No pill you can take for a broken heart. And some of you all tried. You can drink all the liquor you want. When it wears off, your heart's still broken. That's the way it works. That's why God hates divorce. Because the wound that it creates cannot be healed by medication. Matter of fact, the Bible says the only thing that can heal a broken heart, listen carefully, only one thing on earth that can heal it, only one. It says, and Jesus spoke these words. He said, the Spirit of God is upon me. Watch him now. He says, and he has anointed me, and he listed some things. But he separated one of them. He says, to heal the broken heart. You can only survive a broken heart with a personal encounter with Jesus. Nothing else, he says. You can take all the fensic you want, Tylenol, drink liquor, take drugs, whatever you want. When it wears off, you're still hurting. Only he can fix that. It's that it, 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 it is that bad. God says, I hate divorce, but he doesn't hate the divorcee. So you are loved, my dear. You've been through a rough life, it's been tough, but it's okay. He still loves you. He never wants you to experience that thing again. And that's why a single seminar is so important. Again, my purpose for this few minutes is to talk you out of, the, out of marriage. <laughs> I want you to settle into that. Look, let me not rush into this thing anymore. Let me settle into being single right now. Because some of you are coming here looking for someone. I know, weekend, looking, looking. Listen, calm down. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that, but you know, that's not your priority right now. Yeah? Divorce is tragic because divorce is the death of a relationship. It's actually a death. And the same thing that happens when a family member dies happens to you when you get divorced. The same emotional problems, the same psychological experience. It's the same. Because something died. 
it's traumatizing. And so you go through the very same experiences. It's just like physical death. Because divorce is death without a burial. That makes it worse than a physical death. When someone dies, you can always bury them and get rid of them, right? Go to the graveyard, put them in the hole, put some flowers on it, go home, and never go back. The problem is with a divorce, you bury the person, but you keep seeing them at the food store. You put them to the gas station, oh my God, here we go again, you know. You go to pick up the school, just do, do the school pickup, oh my God, there, there's the person. So they keep resurrecting. And every time they resurrect, the pain hits again. That's worse than death. So you don't want to have that kind of life for the rest of your life. It's, it's, it's very, very tough. And that's why God says he hates for anyone to experience divorce.